uh, because uh, we're going to start by doing maintenance on on this bike so this might as well be a, a spring maintenance number or whatever i've already removed the side cover because i wanted to charge the battery but i think it's dead because my charger gives a fault at it so i'm going to try and source a new battery for this thing apparently these things uh, are really finicky when uh, they have a dead battery uh, the ref gauge doesn't work uh, only one side of the blinkers work the horn is uh, pretty pathetic but uh, yeah so i'm going to start off with looking for a new battery hopefully that solves uh, a lot of things if not everything other than that we are going to give this thing a good overhaul so some fresh oil carburetor clean check the air filter on the other side maybe check the fuel pad cock as well maybe give this thing a little bit of a clean and uh, just a general cleanup of, on the bike i've started making a list of uh, parts i need to order uh, tires battery spark plug uh, this thing has an uh, oil filter on this side there's an oil oil filter cartridge in here i think it's just a paper paper oil filter uh yeah the tires are completely dry rotted the the thread wear is actually pretty okay but they're completely dry rotted it's been a couple of months on the open sea in a container uh, that's why i've also started spraying every nut and bolt with wd-40 uh, hopefully it gets a bit looser because uh I've already started on cleaning some parts and some bolts are actually pretty stuck for a bike that's this young in comparison to all the rest here. It's also the first bike I've actually strapped to the lift <laughs> because I'm uh, not taking any chances on this thing falling off. I'm going to start by removing the carb and uh, clean everything up throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner check the elf air filter chain also needs some lubrication it's also because of the salty weather on the ocean i think so without further ado let's uh crack one open and uh take the carb off cheers Got to say, there's not much space in this bike. Ah, uh, ow! Yeah, this fuel line is pretty stuck. So this one is definitely being replaced, I think. Oh, it's coming off. I finally got the intake tube off. This thing is rock hard. I think this has to be malleable. I think this has to be rubber. So what I might try to do is, uh, it's a tip I've been given by somebody, that's to put this thing into hot water. Or what I'm going to try is the ultrasonic cleaner. The hot water might uh, make rubber uh, malleable again. So I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for 10 minutes and see what's what and uh, maybe a bit longer if need be but i'll check it regularly just so it doesn't uh, deform because i know plastic parts can deform it uh, depends a bit on which type of plastic or rubber or whatever it is uh, so yeah this is the carb what is this? this is a 12 is this a 12 millimeter i thought this would have been bigger <laughs> Also, I really love how this choke works. So it put, pulls a little lever that has a little slide in itself, just in front of the throttle slide. And uh, so like so, it just uh, chokes it, which is pretty cool. And it has, it still it has a flap that has a spring, so it can still pull air. Look, so it can still pull air with a bit of resistance. So yeah, let's uh, open this thing. 
and see what's inside. Fuel bowl with an O-ring. The O-ring is still soft, which is nice, so we can reuse it. It's actually pretty soft, or at least very soft. I'm going to take it out to protect it from the ultrasonic cleaner. This thing can go straight in. So this uh, needle here holds the float in place. The, float, uh, the needle I'm going to keep here. Oh shit. The float I'm also going to keep here. So this has a little retainer ring, which uh, goes around this little lip here. So it really can't move anywhere. Pretty cool. There we go. This jet number one. It shows pretty clear, which is good. I'm just going to throw it in anyway. And then this tiny jet over here. This one seems a bit clogged. So yeah, that's it actually. I'm just going to throw this entire thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes, not too long, because there is still some plastic over here, or a rubber piece. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll keep the jets and the bowl in for a little longer. We'll see. Let's throw this thing in, and uh, I'll check back with you in a couple minutes. So the carb is back out of the ultrasonic cleaner. The trick with the hot water Helped a bit. It went from rock solid to a soft rock solid. I don't know. So everything is back clean. Blew everything out with some compressed air. Uh, my camera battery is running low, so I'm going to quickly put everything back together, mount it back up, and uh, maybe fire it back up for a little bit. So see you in a bit. So it still has this uh, when it's down at idle and you, well now it doesn't really do it, but yeah, if you push the throttle too hard, it drops. Now there is no battery in it, so maybe that's the issue, it has, uh, the spark is too weak, but if you slowly raise the throttle, then it goes all the way up. Sounds pretty nice. It also idles a bit rough. You can see the headlight is going, it's flickering. So the carb is clean, but it still has the stuttering at low RPM when you open the throttle. So the guy uh, I bought the bike from said that the bikes can be a bit fiddly or finicky with a dead battery or a low battery. So I've got a new one and I've also ordered a new spark plug just because I'm not sure how long this is. This one is in there. So I'm going to put in a new battery, change the new spark plug and see if it runs any better. If not, I'll just try to adjust the idling screw so that it idles a bit higher so that hopefully it stays running so what i also might do is uh, drain the fuel maybe it's a bit old i'm not quite sure and maybe i'll put in some new fuel and test with that but let's first start with a new battery so let's check the instruction manual i haven't actually done this before Remove plastic film. Procedure for filling the battery with acid. Okay, so basically just uh, flip these, put them on the ports and then just jam them so that the seal gets cut. Three, two, one. Oh. It 
says to leave it like this for 20 minutes. Okay then, guess I'll do that. I'll go and uh, change the spark plug. So we're going from a CR8 EHIX to a CR8 EH, which is the same, but this is an Iridium spark plug. And this is just a regular one. They claim that the Iridium ones are better and they last longer. It's entirely possible. I've never used Iridium, but uh, this one is pretty dirty. So I'm just going to swap it. I'll keep it close just for, for emergency situations. Half a nugget dugger should be fine. Okay. Let's uh, check back with the battery pack. I'm just trying to speed up the process by shaking it a bit so that the air bubbles get free. So far so good. The outside ones are already empty. Just shake it lightly, don't go all berserk. The instruction manual says to tap the back of the acid pack. Maybe not slam it, but I'm getting impatient. The acid pack is empty. They say to leave it for 10 minutes, which I don't want to do, but I'm going to do. And then I'm going to install it back in the bike. So while they're waiting for the battery to settle, I've already went ahead and drained the oil. And I'm also going to replace the oil filter. Should be in here. Ooh, these are actually pretty tight. This should, oh, yes. I was about to say this should be spring-loaded. It is. No, my floor. I think the oil filter has seen better days. So it won't be bad to replace it. This thing actually holds a lot of oil. If I read the specifications online, it says this has a one 0.1 liter of oil. So we got a oh shit. I just give it a dent. Fresh new oil filter. Oh no! Yeah, like this. And then there we go. Pretty straightforward, right? Fresh oil filter. This uh, bike actually has a Takegawa, or however you pronounce it, magnetic oil plug. And it also has a, I think it's a Takegawa, or whatever it's called, oil thermometer in the oil filter plug. So the previous owner did do some mods on this bike, which is pretty funny. So yeah, let's uh, put this thing back, fill it with oil. By then I hope the battery should be done. Maybe give it a couple of minutes of charging as well. And uh, hopefully we can uh, start this thing. got fresh oil, fresh battery. I'm going to try with the old fuel just for now. I'm actually going to kick it a couple of times without the ignition so that the oil definitely goes around the block. This thing has a mechanical oil pump so hopefully this way we can prime it a bit. Ignition on. Uh, maybe choke would be better. There we go. Fires right up. The rev, rev counter is going. This is a good sign. Let's just let it idle for a couple of minutes so that the oil definitely goes around. When we're all done, I'll check the oil again 
because the oil filter still has to be filled up with oil so maybe the level dropped a bit it still has a little of a hesitation when you go filled or at least uh, a fast open throttle so maybe I'll adjust the idler screw a bit come on thing runs very good when the engine is hot it's hot it has it a bit less so I think everything is good I've adjusted the idle screw it idles at uh, just under 2000 rpm so uh, yeah it runs very good one sad thing though I've uh, lost one of my mirrors not sure how but it came loose and it uh, yeah hit the ground hard we have a crack here but uh, yeah i'll remount it and hopefully it stays on we'll see yeah this thing is awesome i love it i can't wait to get this thing on the road I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but uh, there is a little LED here that says speed warning. So you can definitely tell this thing is limited. It gives a warning at 45. And uh, if I remember correctly, these uh, are limited to 60 kilometers an hour because of uh, regulations in Japan. But there is an easy way to de-restrict these bikes. So I'll make a dedicated video of that on how to de-restrict these. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. This thing runs awesome. If you wanna see more of this, make sure to subscribe and uh, smash that like button because this thing will be on the channel a couple of more times because I'm absolutely in love with this thing. It looks stunning and uh, yeah. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.